As Paul sat in this prison cell, these words that he penned were true then and they're true now. See, Paul was at the point of his life, he was looking less out the front windshield and more out of the rear view mirror. Long gone was his Damascus Road experience where he met in a blinding light. He, he met this man named Jesus who said, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And then he went on to this incredible missionary journey and planting churches and writing much of our New Testament even pinning the words in Galatians of what the fruit of the Spirit looks like, love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness. Boy, boy, things have changed. See, a new emperor took the throne in AD 54. His name was Nero. Nero was one of those that history records of his his wickedness and his hatred of Christians. AD 64, Rome, the city began to burn. He's got to find somebody to take the spotlight off him and put it on them. So he chose this group of people called people of the way, Christians. Paul got caught up in that wash. And now in AD 67, he's writing this second letter to this young man, his protege, his, the one, his mentee, Timothy. Well, you can feel the dark cell knowing his time was soon going to come to an end. See, Timothy had been with Paul on some of Paul's good days. But now Paul was in his final days. And these words he wrote to Timothy were real then and they're real now. And they're what you and I need to know in a, in a life of what's coming and bad news and what's next. Paul goes, Timothy, I want to tell you what it looks like to be faithful when the season is hard. See, it's easy to be faithful when the season's good. But how do you do it when the season's hard? 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 10. So if you got your app this morning, great. Get it turned over there. NS, North Star Church, Georgia. You can download it. It'll be there. You got it also in your notes uh, on the web and online watching. I want you to read along with me these words that Paul pinned to Timothy, but you, Timothy. Now, Timothy, four years, he's been leading this church that Paul left at Ephesus. So he's, he's got a little, he's got a little, uh, he's got a little tread on his tires, but Paul knows there's a lot more to come. But you, Timothy, you certainly know what I teach. You know how I live and you know what my purpose in life is. Timothy, you saw it up close. Timothy, you know what I'm about. You know what makes me tick. It's been four years since the last letter Timothy got from Paul. But now this letter gets delivered and it's under very um, difficult circumstances. And I'm sure Timothy knows that when you get imprisoned by Nero, you are not getting out. We know soon thereafter this letter, Paul was beheaded and he's telling Timothy, Timothy, you know me. You know what I teach. You know how I live. You, you know what's important to me. And look at what he said. You know my faith, my patience, my love, and my endurance. Timothy, I didn't start the race. Timothy, I'm finishing the race. Timothy, I didn't just start strong. You know I'm trying to finish strong. You know how much persecution and suffering I've endured. Timothy was witness to some of it. We know he went on at least three of the journeys with Paul. You know about how I was persecuted in Antioch, Iconium, and Lystra. But Timothy, remember, the Lord rescued me from all of it. Yes, and everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus, and I want you to circle this, I want you to underline it, I want you to highlight it, will suffer persecution. Timothy, don't let it catch you off guard. 
Timothy, you're going to wonder where God went. You're going to wonder if you did something wrong. You're going to wonder if you missed the memo or you missed the rest of the story. Timothy, I want you to remember, if you follow Jesus Christ, you will suffer persecution. Don't let it catch you off guard. Timothy, I want you to finish strong. Like I finished strong. I want you to remember that you're going to suffer persecution. And times aren't always going to be easy. But evil people and imposters, they'll flourish. They'll deceive others and they themselves will be deceived. But you, you, Timothy, you must remain, and here's the word, which I underline it, faithful to the things I've been to the things you've been taught. You know they're true. You know that you can trust those who taught you. You've been taught the Holy Scriptures from childhood. Remember the first letter talked about his, his, uh, his grandmother and his mother. You've been taught them since childhood and they've given you wisdom to receive the salvation that comes by trusting in Christ Jesus. Here's the crazy part of the story. Timothy was faithful. Paul wanted him to continue to be faithful. And I just wonder as Paul penned these words in that old dank, dark, nasty cell, if he saw you and he saw me. What would he tell us in 2020 in a year of more questions than answers, in a year of more doubts than certainties? What would he tell us? I think he would tell us what he told Timothy. You know, Larry asked the question here a second ago of would the people around you describe you as faithful? It's a great question. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Would you just let the Lord speak to you? Would you? Would you just say, God, would you speak to me this morning? God, if we've ever needed these words, we need them now. Speak to us today. Fresh new, relevant, on point, on time. And Father, I pray this now in Jesus' name, amen. Well, if I've never met you before, my name is Mike. It's an honor to welcome you here to North Star as we continue this Fruit of the Spirit series. And I'm telling you, today is so timely. You know, we all thought, as Larry said, we'd be gathered in this room, but it wasn't to be. And for Safety and precaution, we we pushed pause. But here's what I know. God still got a word for us this morning. And he's still got something for you and he's got something for me. When we walk through tough times, and I want you to write down, when we walk through tough times, 2020 has been a season of tough times, hasn't it? I saw uh, the great, the, uh, great Christian artist Lecrae write yesterday, uh, I'm looking for a time machine. If anybody's got dibs on one, I want in because it's been a weird year and it's getting stranger as the year goes. So what do we need to do about remaining faithful? Not when we're on top of the mountain, but when we're in that valley. How do we remain faithful? Write down a couple things this morning. Here's what Paul wanted Timothy to know. Your faithfulness, Timothy, is gonna be tested Your faithfulness is going to be tested. I want you to write down why. Because testing shows what it's made of. Testing shows what it's made of. Ron Dunn, a a spiritual mentor to many of us on our staff, he said it this way, an untested faith is a worthless faith. God will make sure your faith is tested. Paul wanted Timothy to know your faith, Timothy, is going to get tested. Here's two ways it's going to happen. One, people are going to try to discourage you. See, even people in those churches that Timothy was going to pastor, they weren't always going to want the same things Timothy wanted or the same things that God wanted. And he wanted Timothy to be prepared. Don't let it catch you off guard. People are going to try to discourage you. I I remember sitting in a thing years ago where uh, it was a gentleman named Lynn Sweet talking and and he talked about Somebody saying, you know, now that they were a believer, they, uh, they felt like they didn't fit in. And he goes, well, you shouldn't. You're not normal anymore. You're abnormal, right? 
and your, your virtues, values, and vision are gonna be a little bit different than everybody else's. And there's gonna be some people that don't like that. And they're gonna try to discourage you. Look at the way he told it to Timothy. You know how much persecution and suffering I've endured, yes, and everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus. Timothy, you just need to know you will suffer persecution if they came after Jesus who's perfect. They're gonna come after you. Don't let it catch you off guard. But the second part of that, don't let they try to discourage you. They'll try, some people are gonna try to deceive you. There's gonna be people in this world that are gonna try to get you off the mark. There's people in this world that are gonna try to get you, Timothy, off point from going where you wanna go. They're gonna try to deceive you. But evil people and imposters will flourish and they'll deceive others and will themselves be deceived. It's something about tough times that makes us want to find an out, right? We look for something simple. We look for something that makes more sense. Sometimes people discourage us, and sometimes people, Timothy, will deceive you. Be careful what and who you believe. You know what I would tell you, North Star, this morning? In a season, a very tough season that will be written about in history books for years and years and years to come, be careful who you listen to for advice. Because some people will discourage you. Some people will try to deceive you. So remaining faithful during hard times is it's not easy. Look at point number two. Timothy, I want you to remember your God will be with you. I want you to write a little thought under it. Even when it appears he won't. Did you write that down? Even when it appears he won't. See, there's, we, we, in our brain, we feel like that God is most present when things are at its best. And sometimes we find out God is more present when things aren't at their best. Mike, do you ever struggle with that? Yeah, I do. See, in, in, in my trade, in my business, you, uh, you, you feel better about yourself when the room's full. You never feel more spiritual than after Easter. And you never feel less spiritual than during COVID when the building's empty, okay? Paul tells Timothy, Timothy, don't forget your God will be with you. Look at the way he said it. You know all about how I was persecuted in Antioch, Iconium, and Lystra. But the Lord rescued me from all of it. Timothy, he rescued me, and he's going to rescue you. When you walk through that valley and you walk through that dark time and you walk through that season of not knowing, I, I saw uh, Christine Kane, a great writer, author, speaker, say the other day, never have I said the words, I don't know, I'm not sure, can I get back with you later more than I've said them in the past few months? And is it hard to find God in all of it? Yes, it is. But here's what I know. The same God that was there on the day that you met him isn't gonna leave your side. He's not gonna throw you out to the wolves and say, I'll come back and see how you did. He's there watching over your life. And that's what Timothy was telling Telling, Paul was telling Timothy, Timothy, don't think for a second I've ever been alone. Don't think for a second I'm sitting in this jail cell, this prison cell by myself. And Timothy, when the world turns and it may turn on you too, he's got you. And he stands with you. You know what I tell you this morning? He's got you too. So you may be walking through a season of grief. You may be walking through a season of question. You may be walking through a season of calamity, financial, family. You may be walking through, you are walking through a season of questions. What's school gonna look like? Are there sports in the fall? Is this gonna get worse before it gets better? 
Are we gonna shut down again? All, all the questions that are going through all of our brains. Am I gonna get sick? Is it gonna hit my family? Is it gonna hit my church? All those things we all walk through. I want you to remember what he told Timothy. Timothy, don't forget God's faithful. I want you to write this little thought down in number two, ready? God always keeps his promises. That's what faithfulness means. God always keeps his promises. He is a promise keeper, not a promiser. He's a promise keeper. Point number three. And Timothy, your convictions, they're gonna hold you. See, beliefs are things that we hold, but when we get squeezed, right? Boy, those beliefs can go out the back door because we're not, we're not all in. But convictions, beliefs are something that we hold. Convictions are things that hold us. And he says to Timothy, Timothy, you better know. Look at what he says in 314. You must remain faithful to the things you've been taught. You know they're true. For you know you can trust those who taught you. When the light cuts out, when you're in an empty room and everybody's on the other side of that lens, Mike, I want you to remember So gotcha. Do you journey with me for the things I give you? Or do you journey with me because you love me? That's the season I've been walking through. What about you? It's funny, I, I, as I prep for this weekend, there's two words I pray or said at my funeral one day. Faithful, consistent. Not the best, <laughs> certainly not the smartest, certainly not the best looking. I hope my wife will say he was faithful and consistent. I hope my kids will say, Dad may not have been a lot of things, but he was faithful, he was consistent. I hope my roommates from college and my best friends growing up will say, he's faithful and consistent. So we live in a world you don't see faithfulness much anymore. Faithfulness in marriage, faithfulness to careers, to companies. I mean, it's just sort of a life now. We're sort of in and out. And when you see it, it's stark. So in my office this morning, I was up there prepping and there's a rocking chair. I never sit in it. It was my mom's. I have it in my office, not because it matches anything else. I have it in my office because it's a picture of faithfulness. I watched that lady, not perfect, but I watched her live her faith till the day she left this planet. Faithful and consistent. How do we do it? Number one way is we spend time in God's word. Number one way, he is in this book so if I want to know what Jesus and God look like, it's in this book. I don't read it so he'll love me more. I read it so I will learn to love him more and fall in love with him. When I thought about this point, I thought about one man. We used him here in a series back in 08 called Still Standing. We called him Preacher Jet. Many called him Reverend Jet. At the time of this video, I believe he was 94. He lived to be a little over 100 years old. 
but this video was shot in his little apartment over in Palmetto. And I want you to hear his words, would you? Check it out. Well, I'm Clarence Jett, I commonly call Reverend. I don't know how Reverend I am, but they call me that anyway. Ordained to the gospel ministry in 1955 and have been active and was active in an active ministry till 95. And since 95, I've been hit or missing, hit or missing, serving as a, a teacher here in the Baptist Manor and uh, just doing my best to live for the Lord. The book was given to us. I got to hold it in my hand. If you're taking a picture, <laughs> I, I'm going to have it buried with me. I've already left it in my, my will when they lay me out over there. Just exactly like that in the, in the, in the coffin with the book in my hand because this is God's road map. This, it's the manual. You know, you get an automobile or television or refrigerator, they give you a little manual with it to tell you how to operate. The Lord gave us this little manual right here to tell us how to operate as, just, as children of God. And I believe that it's the Word of God. It's the message that God gives for mankind. That's what I think about the book. Whew. I remember going to his funeral. And the, the theme of that man's life, faithfulness. At that video, he was six months from losing his wife. And they had been married within a month of 70 years. Faithful and consistent. I remember sitting with him. And Preacher Jet told me, he goes, Mike, every morning I open his word. It's new and fresh. Faithful. See, faithfulness is really not a big decision. Faithfulness is small decisions every day going in the same direction. Right? Isn't that right? I can hear his words in my brain. We were back looking for that video because I remember that interview sitting in his, his little apartment there in 2008. A long time ago. But you spend time in God's word final things you spend time with faithful believers my life is better because of preacher jet my life is better because of that man and my mom and my youth pastor and my pastor growing up who are still walking it tonight I'm going to have a little get together, socially distanced, of course, in my backyard of some old college roommates, teammates. We're grilling out when I was in town coaching, coming over, we'll dive in the pool. We're going to sit out there and swap stories for hours. You know what I love about those guys? We were together 30 years ago. And they're still walking. And they're still doing it. They're faithful husbands, they're faithful dads, they're faithful men, and they're faithful believers, and they make me better. What about you? What's God taught you during this season? You want your life to shine for Him? Live for Him every day. Would you pray with me? Father, I think we got it all screwed up. I think that in our brains, we, we think to be great, we've got to be known. To be great, we've got to be recognized. To be great, we've got to be on a billboard or a magazine. 
God, I don't think greatness is gonna be determined by you that way. I believe your, your chart of greatness begins with faithfulness. God, may we be found faithful. 2020 is the year it would be easy to leave the church. 2020 is the year it would be easy to quit walking with Jesus because I don't see people every week. 2020 would be the year that it'd be easier to take some time off from God. God, even though we're not gathered in the same building, even though we're in different places, may we be found faithful to what you've called us to. God, may we as a church be faithful to your word and faithful to live out what you've called us to live out. And maybe you're going, Mike, I, I can't say that's me right now. I know Jesus, but I can't say, well, would you just tell the Lord, Jesus, I just want to lock eyes with you every day and walk towards you. Would you? Maybe you go, Mike, I don't know Jesus but I look at my life now and I need him more than ever. Can I lead you in a prayer to meet him? Could I? It goes like this. Dear Lord Jesus, would you pray that? Dear Lord Jesus, I need you. I believe you lived for me and I believe you died for me and I believe you rose again just for me. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus, would you pray that? And be my personal Lord and Savior. God, thanks for loving us. Thanks for fighting for us. And thanks for sticking in for us. It's in your name that we pray. Amen.